Did Mullenstock just rebound or is it more of a dead cat bounce? Hi again everyone, hope you're all doing really well. So obviously Thursday we got a little bit of relief from Mullen stock, a little bit in the sense that um, the stock finished by up by about 16%. It was up by as much as almost 30%. It was almost had recaptured much of Wednesday's losses um, before you know settling down. And obviously we saw some further climbing in the aftermarket. So that was a good sign from the stock. Um, now I guess one thing you could read into that is that perhaps that uh, Wednesday sell-off was an over-exaggeration. Uh, maybe it's a bit of a response to some of the information that was in the letter to shareholders. Now, I sort of did a video on the shareholder letter the other day saying that it doesn't really answer any of the concerns that shareholders were having at the moment, especially in terms of um, you know dilution and you know also now the fact that we might be staring at another reverse stock split. Uh, however, it did provide a couple of reminders um, about the stock and the value of the stock, particularly being that um, the cash value and the underlying net asset value per share is actually higher than the current traded price of the stock. However, that is based on uh, financial figures from the 31st of March. Uh, so that is one sort of saving grace to the stock is that you know, if you're buying the stock, you're, you're buying like about 40 cents for the price of 30 cents at the moment. That's kind of what you're getting. Uh, but it's just, where's that money going at the moment? Because there's a lot of, obviously, cash burn going on with Marlin Automotive at the moment. And that's still hurting the stock. Um, but I think, on top of that, the one thing that was perhaps driving the stock up a little bit further is the fact that the, the letter did reaffirm that the company is still on track with its production dates. Uh, I know, obviously, given you know the history the company has had, there's always a lot of questions around uh, whether or not we're going to be reaching production goals or not. Uh, and I guess that letter helped reaffirm um, and ease investor minds uh, to this fact that yes, things are still tracking well and that we should see class three production begin uh, this uh, this quarter basically or before September. So that's uh, pleasing news. Uh, and I suppose it's also worth pointing out that yesterday was another day where shorts were not actually able to effectively cover positions in the stock. Um, so it might make for an interesting uh, situation come Friday because uh, now that there has been a bit of a rebound uh, with the stock, there's a little bit of momentum. Then there could be. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna flan, fan these flames a little bit, but you know it would be welcome. But there could be some attempt to try and squeeze a few shorts out of the stock um, on Friday, given that uh, you know there's momentum there already, and a lot of people who may have taken up short positions in the falling stock on Wednesday. Um, now might have been caught out by the, the sharp rate of the stock experience. So we could even be getting a dimension of this come into the stock come Friday. Um, obviously, we're off the short sale of restricted list, so Friday's going to be a day of a normal trade. Um, so yeah, that's my sort of three main things that I can kind of think of about why we had uh, the rebound in the stock. So obviously, firstly, the stock was potentially oversold. Um, there's a reminder to the company that the, you know, the underlying value of the stock is actually higher than what it's being traded at, which is... You know, interesting considering it's a technology company, they usually have a higher valuation. Uh, and thirdly, uh, you know, there's the potential that, uh, oh, sorry, also obviously the production dates are still um, on track to be met. And obviously there's also the um, potential of a little bit of a short squeeze rally coming in the stock. I guess that's four reasons I've thought there anyway. Um, look, it's, it's a little bit of welcome relief, but it doesn't really take away from the sort of recent pain that the share um, has put uh, you know investors through in recent times, but you know you got to take what you can with this company. Um, I think the production being on schedule is really good. I think we'd really need to be focusing operationally on the stock. Um, although I will not be opposed to any sort of short squeeze action that uh, might actually put the company uh, will return a bit more value to the shareholders uh, in the company. And I think that's something you know that I think many would be on. Uh, in agreement with. I know there are some people who sort of say they don't like it when uh, their stock's being targeted for a short squeeze because, you know, while you get these short sugar rushes in the stock, it kind of leaves this negative note or connotation about the company. That is, I suppose, a reasonably good argument, but at the same time, you know, investors just want to see their money grow back again. And, you know, even if there is a short squeeze, uh, it does give maybe some long-suffering investors the chance to pull out money if they really wish to wash their hands of the, the 
of Marlin. Yeah, and you know what? I wouldn't fault people for feeling that way given how the company's gone. Um, yeah, I guess the other thing that's worth uh, sort of talking about too with all this is, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, there's like a really strong calls for um, the sacking of David Mitchery at the moment. Um, you know, like there's a I can feel the sentiment towards him, um, but I suppose at the same time, if he's uh, you know able to get deliveries on track and production happening, um, you know, there is a bit of a strong case for him to stay. And I think you know, especially if some of these partnerships he's made and I know people don't want to talk too much about Lawrence Harge at the moment but um, the one he's working with Lawrence Harge if that actually does benefit and work out you know there's there's actually a lot of things that um, have been short to medium term pain for investors that Dave Mitchell has instigated but they could really you know benefit um, the, the share value in the longer term so I guess like you know at the moment I can see why people feel angry at him I feel angry at him don't get me wrong um, but you know, I guess we kind of have to see where things are going with this. Uh, but I think an important thing to discuss also is that there is, you know, obviously real big questions that need to be answered regarding like why why is the um, company why has it persisted to take this sort of toxic, diluting approach to funding its operations? Could they have found like a better way to you know um, fund these rather than selling like these warrants, which basically. Um, have blown out shareholders as the share value has fallen you know it's really been quite damaging so that's something that i think really needs to be addressed and hopefully on their august 3 shareholder meeting it is something that is addressed anyway um where do you see it, all this leading on friday are we going to see some continued momentum of the stock and a bit more return of value for shareholders are we in fact looking at a bit of a short squeeze situation or do you just think it's kind of um the market reacting to reassurances from Marlon Automotive that things are going well. Um, also, please, give me your opinions on David Mitchell. We're getting lots of them lately, and it's been really interesting to read. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't necessarily always get to respond to everything that people write. Uh, often when I post these things, it's kind of, um, you know, I'm going to sleep. I'm in Australia. I'm in a very different time zone to you guys. You know, it's already Friday afternoon here, and you go, it's like probably about 1 in the morning or 2 in the morning New York time uh, when I'm recording this, so we've got a bit of a time difference here. Anyway, but I read it all. I do reply to some. Um, I do my best, but yeah, I love hearing it. Good banter, and you know, I've also found it a very rewarding place for people who you know. I've often found um, breaking news being dropped in those comments too, so it's really valuable. It's a good sort of communal feel we got there. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully, Mullen does good by us all on Friday, and may the markets trade in our favour. Cheers.